Welcome to another Big Man Motors video. So if you're like me and you've just got your new Explorer EV or a Capri when uh, when they're out on sale very soon uh, and you want to put a dash cam in there you'll notice there isn't a 12 volt socket for you to plug your dash cam into. So I'm going to just show you what you need to do in order to add a dash cam to a vehicle without a 12 volt socket. Okay, first you need to locate your fuse box, which on the Explorer and Capri is just here. And you're going to need to find a fuse that is 12 volts powered when the ignition's on. Now I know that this 15 amp fuse here is a 12 volt ignition feed, but you can have a probe around in your fuse box. Um, and then obviously you'll be able to find a, a suitable uh, circuit that's fused that you can piggyback into. So, so I'm going to use this one. It's also got plenty of height in it because you've got some relays here that kind of it bulges out here. So you've got more height. So I'm picking one that's in an area where I've got height because the piggyback system that I need to put into here is going to need some extra height. So the kit. A hard wire kit that piggybacks the fuse, they're all pretty much generic. I got this one from Amazon for about 10 quid, I think it was, wasn't too expensive. And you just pick the piggyback fuse holder that suits the size of the fuse that you're using. You see, standard fuse, that's the one there. And then you need to plug the piggyback fuse holder into the fuse box. Now I can't get in there and film it at the same time, so I'm going to install that and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so that's now plugged back in. Um, I've put the original fuse in the first position of the fuse holder, which is the one nearest the prongs. And then I've got to insert this little guy, little five amp fuse. Got to insert that in the second set of prongs on the fuse holder. That will then bring this live when the ignition's on. Stand by, I'll be back in a second. Okay, so that's now successfully in there. What I'm now going to do is do a quick voltage test to make sure this is working. Make sure I've got 12 volts on here when the ignition's on. I'll be back in a second. Right, so I've got my 12 volt probe stuffed in there. Um, I'm picking up the earth on the check strap bolt. As you can see, the ignition off. Nothing is on there, so I'm just going to switch the ignition on. Car's beeping at me because the ignition's on with the door open. I've just trapped the wire in the edge of the glove box. Put my 12 volt probe in there. See, no voltage. Touch the other probe on the earth. And we've got 14.63 volts there, so that's battery voltage. So that's all right, that's all working. So I'm gonna switch off and show you the next step. Okay, so you've got your 12 volt. You switch 12 volt for your, your dash cam. So that's all in there and wired up. Um, this is the the kit that we're going to be using. As you can see here, we've got the bullet that goes into the 12 volt connection there. But you also need to pick up an earth point. So a good way to pick up an earth point is find something metal on the structure of the dashboard around the fuse box. Now I've found here, there's a hinge for the glove box. Um, that's a metal structure there, you can see it behind the, the hinge, uh, and I've already checked and that's got good earth continuity. So what I'm going to do, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, see if I can get under the dash. So, right. I'm pointing up there to the bolt on the hinge, whether you can see it around there so that's the, the bolt I'm going to be taking out I'm just going to back it off a little bit and then clamp the um, the earth tag underneath there so let's do that and I might get a photograph of it when it's installed All right. 
Okay, that's done up. So that's our earth point picked up under there. So I now need to tidy all the wiring up up underneath the dash and then run the wire up for the uh, dash cam. So I'll cut back in when I've done some more of that. Okay, so the dash cam is stuck in place. Now the reason you want to do that is to make sure you've got enough wire to feed up to the dash cam without having too much excess to try and lose up the top. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, I've run that up, tucked it behind here, so I shall use the trim tool and I shall run it down behind the rubber and then we'll try and lose it around here. So I'll cut back in a minute. Okay, so we've hidden the wire as best we can around there, down behind the trim and it just loops around just above there. I can't really push it in there anymore. I don't want to nip any of the plastic in the trim but um, but that will still, still allow the hood release to operate no problem and the little bit of loose material or loose wire that will kind of lose itself behind the trim so that's all in there all I've got to do now is tidy up in here so just put that wire out of sight, down there, refit the cover on the glove box, for the fuse box I mean, right. <clears throat> well, I haven't tested this yet, <clears throat> so let's see, oh we've got power because the lights have come on, yeah and that's coming to life. That's working nice. I've got to format the SD card, not a problem. But then if I turn it off, it powers off. So that's it. That's how you install a dash cam into a car such as the new Ford Explorer, Capri. It'll work on the Volkswagen MEB, other platform vehicles as well. So the Skoda Anyak, the ID345, Buzz, etc., the Audis, um, anything, and oh, also the Cooper as well. Anything with that fuse box layout, as you saw there. It's dead easy. You haven't got to take your car to Halfords and pay through the nose to get one installed. You can do it yourself with that kit that's about 10 quid from Amazon. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning in. Catch you in the next one.